What's going on, guys? John from the Game Review here, welcoming you to the week three power rankings. Hopefully, you guys had a great week of football last week. I had an interesting week, nonetheless. Is you know, this week was kind of crazy in a lot of ways, a lot of standpoints. It did kind of show the kind of craziness of the NFL and how it could go throughout the season. Um, and you know, like you look at this this season, there's a lot of injuries that happened. A lot of things did not go the way that some of these teams wanted it to go. <coughs> Clearly, of course, every team wants to get a win, but unfortunately, it was just not in the cards for some teams this week. <laughs> but it was, it did happen for the cards. Um, but yeah, so the first team on my power rankings is of course the New York Jets not moving a single spot. They were trash. They continue to be trash. Adam Gase needs to get fired. I'm on the Adam Gase firing train. I swear, like, how do you fail that badly as a Jets team against the bruised and battered 49ers? Like, how? Like, that's the real question of like, it's like, you, you the 49ers now have lost their entire defensive line, have now lost Jimmy Garoppolo. They had a second string quarterback play the second half, and yet still. And they lost their running back. Like, they still managed to lose, which is really sad. Next, we got the Giants, of course. They played the Bears. The Bears couldn't score 20 on this team, which is not surprising. Mitch Trubisky is not that great. I don't really think that the Bears have much this season. I just think they kind of had the virtue of an easy early schedule. The Lions aren't too much of a threat. And, like... The Giants are literally not a threat, so that was a nice, kind of easy first home game of the season, and even then, the Bears still struggled, so, like, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do. Next, the first team to actually move places, we've got the Broncos moving down two spots. Now, of course, they lost, obviously, lost to the Steelers, but in a closer game than you would have thought it was, but a lot of it was actually due to the fact that... um. Like, the the Steelers had control in this game. And they lost Drew Locke. Now, they have Blake Bortles, but Blake Bortles is also turnover prone. I do believe that they are great in that 30 spot. I think that they could do better. And we'll kind of see what happens this week. But we'll find out, kind of. I think that the, the they have a lot of road and ground to come up with. Um, but they're... They did pretty good last week, but again, other teams impressed me more, like the Miami Dolphins, who get to stay at 29. They did not play, of course, the best game of their life, but they kind of pseudo kept up. They actually really did with the Bills, 31 to 28, and you'd think, wow, okay, so you kept up with a top-tier team, but again, it was a divisional game, so you can't really judge too much off of these divisional games because things can happen very quickly, and you never know um, what could happen aspire and transpire because of it so I do have the Dolphins at 29 but again they're definitely a team to watch um they could move up they could stay down but uh 0-2 is kind of exactly where we thought we would this team would be so uh definitely I feel like this is where that they deserve to be next we got Carolina dropping three spots from 25 to 28 they lost McCaffrey uh, they lost to a divisional foe in the Buccaneers. Obviously, the Buccaneers are not a bad team. They're, like, one of those middling teams. Um, just, they got a lot of experience and a lot of talent, uh, the Buccaneers do. So, I feel like, uh, that just kind of overran the Panthers. And then losing McCaffrey for at least four to six weeks, always a big blow when you lose your best offensive weapon. Um, so I believe that the, they're going to drop a few spots because of that. Uh, next... Coming off of the loss is the Cincinnati Bengals, although they do move up three spots. Joe Burrow performed great on Thursday Night Football. He had it's, The only thing that scares me is the fact that he had to throw the ball 61 times. and I think that this is the most by any rookie, um, I believe. And that's a little scary, the fact that they had to throw the ball. But the Bengals are not a bad team. They're a team that you could see going places. Um, and getting wins, and, like, I just, I, I like this Bengals team. I do think that they are hurt early due to the fact they had no preseason. 
Um, because you know, when you have a rookie quarterback, you kind of want to have that preseason. That preseason is very helpful, and they don't have that. So I just I expect this team to take a couple losses, like but, but they've had close losses, which is awesome to see. Because that means that this team is definitely gonna be better for the future. Joe Burrow is definitely a good quarterback for the future for this Bengals team. I like it. I can't wait to see his sophomore season. Yeah, I know I'm counting as rookie season, but I just don't think the team's going to go very far just because, you know, in a COVID season, their situation is not very good. Um, but they did perform very well, so they get the three-point boost. Next, a team that actually took a pretty big hit, the Eagles, dropping four spots from 22 to 26. They, oh, I don't even know how to explain it. You lost by almost 20 points to a Rams team. Now, the Rams are performing very well this season. Sucks for me as a Seahawks fan, but, like, Rams are doing well. Um, I think they're back to that 2018 status, which is definitely not something as a Seahawks fan I want to see, but, like, I'm okay with it. Um, Eagles definitely dropping four spots. They just look terrible, and that's scary when you can look that bad. And Like, I don't know. I don't know where this team's going to go or how this team's going to work, but definitely not what you want to see as an Eagles fan is getting blown out at home in your home opener. Um, actually, yeah, because they went to the, they went to Washington. Yes, they did. They went to Washington. Um, so yeah. So next is the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, they went up two spots this week, which is, again, something that you look at and you're like, okay, I'm down with them going up a couple spots here. Um, again, despite a loss, but I think they performed a lot better than this Eagles team. They, a lot of people would probably tell me to move them up further. I just don't see that yet. Um, I want to see Justin Herbert play a lot better um, and, like, get a win. I think he can do it. But, again, you drop a big lead. It is a Super Bowl champion, so I give you a little bit more forgiveness. Um, and I still move you guys up two spots. I think that I want to see you guys perform really well, get a W, um, which I think you can do against this Carolina Panthers. Um, and I want to see, like, what they can do. And I I think they can do well. Um and I guess I'm I'm kind of rooting for them to do better. I want to see them in that like lo, or high or low to low twenties. Uh, I'd love to see them next week. Um, next, our biggest drop of the week, which I said in week two, our biggest game would be the Colts and the Vikings. And boy, was I not wrong. This Vikings ball club drops ten spots. The first team to drop double digits. And potentially the only team this season to drop double digits. Holy cow, this Vikings team. I thought they were going to be a lot better. Kirk Cousins had a 15.9 passer rating. Bruh. 15.9. That's terrible. And, like, you can't even tell me, like, anything about this team. They got blown out 28 to 11. They definitely are not looking good. They definitely have a lot of things they need to fix and bolster up. I don't trust this team, and that's big. Like, you need to be able to trust this team, and I just don't, and that's why they dropped a lot of spots, because it's the second game in a row where they've not looked good. Um, like I said, the first game, they like literally scored a lot of points due to garbage time. In this game, they didn't score any points, and it's like, you score 11 points, it's like, oh boy. Um, and in this league, 11 points is nothing. Um, next we have the Cleveland Browns who raise three spots from their win. I think the Browns honestly are a team that could move up a lot further in this rankings. Um, they have a good, they have a good opponent this week. So I'm interested to see how they play. Um, both the teams had a battered, battered, um, like offense. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I believe these teams can be, this team could do better. Uh, but I do feel like they're one of those, like, weird, like, and, like they're going to be in this column, I feel like, all year. Um, sorry, Browns fans. I just, I believe it. I don't see this team moving into the next column at all. Um, next, we have Detroit dropping, I think, three spots. Yeah, dropping three. Um, the, I don't even know what to say about this Lions team. Uh, like, they played the Packers. That's literally... And they played exactly how we expected to play against the Packers, uh, which is not so. That's not the reason why they're being dropped. The reason why they're being dropped is because the other teams around them played better. They had better competitive games, so that's the reason. Speaking of, we've got Washington football team at twenty-one. No movement there. Um, honestly, you would think 
that I would have dropped football team down a little bit after their 15-point loss to Arizona. But they really caught Arizona at the wrong time. And I believe that they're better than the Lions um, as it stands. I believe that they're better than the Browns as it stands. I feel like... Um, but I think this is going to be great because we do have football team and Browns this week. So if the Browns win, then they're definitely going to overtake football team because they're close enough in the rankings. Um, so I'll be interested to see what happens this week. But this is the team I want to talk about. A team that surprisingly didn't go down. The Atlanta Falcons. <sighs> they do this to me every year where I put belief in them and I want them to do good. And then they do something like this. Teams that score... 39 points with zero turnovers are 440 and one. You want to take a guess on who that one loss is? You're yeah, right. The 2020 Falcons. Ugh, like I had them beating the Dallas Cowboys and they almost did. I thought they were going to just nip the Dallas Cowboys and then they can't recover an onside kick. Like, oh, like, Dallas fans are probably cheering like crazy, but like, uh, 440 and one Falcons, just Falcons fans. Let's take that into account. 440 and one. Let me move on because I find the more I talk about this team, I think the more heated I'll get. So the next team that we're going to put on our list is the Indianapolis Colts moving up five spots after their win against Minnesota. Like I said, this is going to be, this was going to be a big momentum shift year at or momentum shift in the rankings that it was. Moving up five spots is definitely, I think this is where I they were per beginning of the season um, more so. And I believe that's where they fit right now. They're not really showing too much promise, but they are showing that they can win games that they deserve to win. So, nice win. Um, Phillip Rivers played well. And if Phillip Rivers can continue to play well, that's great. I feel like he definitely needs to adapt to having an actual line. And it's nice to see that he has that. Um, next is Houston. Houston drops five spots, uh, from 13 to 18. I know that's a big hit for this team, considering they lost to the Chiefs and the Ravens, who are my one and two, but <clears throat> they, they have not, they have not kept it close. Uh, they had a 14 point loss to the Chiefs and now a 17 point loss to the Ravens. Like that's bad. And I can't say much more other than that. It's just bad to see that that many points being put up against this team. They're just constantly. Next, we have the Jags moving up six spots. Our biggest riser of the week is Jacksonville. Gardner, which you played well. And, you know, again, a lot of you guys would be surprised that I moved them up six points amongst a loss. But when you can keep up with a divisional opponent like that, obviously... This team, we expected to be bad. We didn't expect them to be good, and they're not playing that. They're playing good. They're playing good football, and I think they deserve to be above all these other teams um, in that kind of middle. But I don't think they deserve to be much higher than where they are right now. They haven't shown that much promise. They haven't shown that they can do everything. Um, but they have shown that they're better than a lot of these teams. And, like, again, 17, I think, is a great spot for them. They played some two tough opponents and came out with one win and almost beat the Titans for another one. And it's just like, if you were, if they were going to be two and oh, I feel like they'd still be in the same spot. Um, maybe even like two spots higher. But again, I feel like that's where they deserve to be is like right here. They haven't really shown too much, but they've shown enough to where they could be a playoff team. I believe it. Um, I believe that they have a great shot at actually making this playoffs. If they continue to play like this, um, next we got Chicago moving up two spots. Um, again, they played the Giants. They didn't show too much promise, though. The reason why they moved up as much as they did is that teams moved down, like the Texans moved down to five spots. So that's going to bump them up one. Um, and then another team like the Vikings. So literally the only reason they bumped up those two spots was because two teams above them dropped below them. So, that's why they moved up the two spots, uh, and that's going to be the same thing for Dallas. Only reason they moved up a couple spots is because the teams below them just had heavy drops. Um, Dallas, honestly, I don't even believe deserved neither neither Dallas or Chicago. I don't believe deserved to be in the, in this row, but uh, Dallas will be proving its worth against Seattle, so we'll see. But as it stands, I don't believe that either of them really deserve to be in this row, but. 
<laughs> by virtue of teams dropping, they're there. Um, next, we have the one, uh, I think that, yeah, this is the biggest drop, or no, second biggest drop of the week, the 49ers, dropping six spots. Yes, they're two now, right? And yes, they beat the Jets handily, but that's not saying much. They lost Jimmy Garoppolo, Raheem Mostert, they lost Solomon Thomas, Nick Bosa, they lost a lot. They have Richard Sherman out now as well. I mean, he was out last week. And, you know, I didn't give him too much of a drop. They deserve it this week. They lost way too many pieces on defense. And I think offensive-minded teams are going to carve them. And realistically, like, that's why the Jets are at the bottom. If you can... They, literally, the 49ers JV team, they have they have nobody on their starting uh, defensive line. All they have is their linebackers, a corner, and their safeties. As their starters. They have six six of their 11 starters. Like, to have six of your 11 starters on defense and still not score 20 points, that's not a testament to how good the 49ers is. That's how bad the Jets are. Um, and I feel like they're going to win this next week, but I think they're going to probably stay around this mark. But we'll kind of see um, what happens. Next, we have Tennessee Titans dropping four spots despite the win. Um, again, similar situation. They just were terrible. Like, oh, my God. You cannot let a team do that to you. But look at that. This entire NFC South is, like, just going to be interesting. I'm, that's going to be a division to watch. Um, next, we have the Raiders moving up four spots after a win against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they're a good team. They're a team you need to look at. And be like, oh wow, damn, they're 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 doing it. They're doing what they need to do. And I feel like under John Gruden, a running offense is working out very well for them. They've got Josh Jacobs, one of the better running backs in the league. On top of the fact, Derek Carr is now playing well. They have Derek Carr playing well. And if as long as Derek Carr can continue this amazing, like play well, do well, they could easily be a top ten team. Uh, it'll be hard for them to get there considering the teams above them, but they're doing really well. Next is Tampa Bay going up one spot. Basically, due to the 49ers dropping. <laughs> That's all I can say. And the 49ers dropped hard, um, moving them up a spot. They did get a win, but I do feel like they need to do some better things. Uh, next, again, a team moving up five spots, the LA Rams. The Rams, holy cannoli, they are playing lights out football. And if they can continue that, they can move up in this top 10 somewhere. But right now, they're on the edge of the top 10. Um, they're in it just barely, but they are playing really well. Keep it up, Rams, as I say that as a Seahawks fan. But, you know, if my whole division is 3-0 by the end of the week, besides the 49ers, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, next is the Patriots moving up a spot despite a loss of the Seattle Seahawks. This New England Patriots team proved... Sunday night that they were a good team and a team to watch. They proved that they are definitely a top 10 team and there's nobody that can tell them otherwise. There is absolutely like they're they're definitely top 10 if not um like top 8. Um but they have some proving to do this next week. They got the Raiders. Um uh, that's going to be a momentous game in terms of power rankings and I'm excited to see that one. Um next we got Buffalo going down two spots. If you let the Dolphins keep up with you, you deserve to drop. I'm sorry. The Dolphins are complete and utter trash, and they, 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 they kept up with you. Like, nothing else that you can say. Like, there. They kept up. Um, next is, Air. even though Josh Allen is actually playing really well, um, yeah, you can't let the Dolphins keep up with you. Um, like I said, even though it's a divisional opponent, and I don't typically, I don't give harsh drops, which I didn't give a harsh drop. Um... But, yeah, I still feel like the Bills are better than the Patriots in the division. But, yeah, definitely need some work. Next, we got Arizona. And, see, we didn't knock down the Washington football team. But we did give Arizona a big boost of plus four. Uh, they're top seven. <laughs> the, the, like, last week, my comment se or last week, my comment section, somebody said that the Cardinals should be top ten. And I was like, oh, they haven't shown me enough to really be top ten. They did it this week. They showed me that they can be top 10 against a Washington football team who actually got was riding high off a win against Philly. They did well. Congratulations, Arizona. Welcome to the top 10. Enjoy your stay because it will probably be for a long while. 
Next, we got the New Orleans Saints dropping two spots after their loss. Honestly, Raiders are not a bad team, so they're not going to get hit that hard. Um, I do believe that the Saints are still a top-tier team in the league. Um, you know, 10-point losses uh, on the road in a new stadium. It's believable. Um, I'm not surprised, but they got the Packers, so this is going to be... They might be one of those one and two teams that are in the top 10 still because they're just... They had a hard schedule. Um, next is Pittsburgh. They move up a spot, I believe, or no, two spots. Um, Bills dropped. They, they, they took care of business. Um, so they get the boost. Seattle Seahawks, they get to move up one spot after, you know, they <laughs> realistically, the only reason they moved up a spot is because the Saints lost. Um, they played well against the Patriots, but again, same issues that they had last week. So I'm going to be interested to see if they can clean that up. Um, next Green Bay staying still. They just did what they needed to do. They blew out a team they needed to blow out. Um, so they're staying still. They're the best team in the NFC as of right now. But I feel like there is a lot of chance that things can change. Um, and then we have number two, Baltimore. And number one, <laughs> Kansas City. Again, both of them are where they believe. I believe that they all are. I believe that the, this week's matchup is going to be crazy. I think they're going to have the biggest, craziest matchup of the week. Um, so I'll be crazy. It'll be crazy to see what happens and kind of who does the job and who does their bidding. So, of course, the three matchups of the week for power ranking shifts. I've got the first one. I've got both the Sunday night and the Monday night games going to be big shifts. Um, if the underdog wins and then the next big shift and like the actual, like, truest big shift game will be the Rams and the Bills. If the Bills lose, this is an opportunity for the entire NFC West to be in the top eight. Uh, or not the entire, but three teams in the NFC West to be in the top eight. I mean, if I think that easily three teams could be 3-0. and And then another one is the Raiders and the Patriots. There's a lot of shifting that is could be happening next week, depending on who wins. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know this was a little shorter. I kind of rushed because I have to go to work. But hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Love you all. Peace.